Hello and welcome back to another episode of a Battletech Guide. My name is Saiken and today we're going to answer the burning question what is the strongest medium sized lance and with medium sized I mean weight category of medium. As with the other videos in the series I will build the potentially strongest medium sized lance using only the available material within the base game and all of the expansions, no mods and nothing of the like will be included. So if you are looking at the medium uh, tier, you will see that there are quite a few contenders for the top dog. The Griffin is one of it in its various iterations. The Kitaro certainly is a good one as well. Shadowhawk and Wolverine can be considered quite strong as well. And there can even be an argument made for a Centurion as the Centurion has a couple of interesting setups it usually lacks uh, the hard points though but it is a quite sturdy mech so what's really the um, best mech in this uh, tier since so the medium tier is interesting normally the best mech either is determined by just the highest lower load and the best ability to carry weapons or by any special abilities and if you look at the medium tier all of the special tier abilities just like the phoenix hawk and the vulcan so the ones that came in with the expansions were rather placed on the lower end of the bracket so per definition there is no like top dog that came in late to the game which kind of then begs the next question, what is the best mech as a weapon platform being determined by the amount of hard points and so on and so forth. And I'll cut a long uh, story short and the by far best mech that exists is the Griffin 2N, which is an old Star League model that is the only large sized medium mech. So by large size, I mean near to the 55 ton mark that has the uh, old Star League mod and with the old Star League mod the entire frame will sink 60 instead of 30 energy the lower you go in the bracket the more important that becomes so the Griffin 2N is by any stretch of the imagination the strongest version of a medium mech comes on top of it with eight hard points two of which are support two of which are energy that is fantastic in itself support hard points are always well taken and the other ones luckily are missile hard points so it even can pack quite a punch and we're going to take a look at the lance composition which will not surprisingly consist out of four of these bad boys so these griffins are difficult to obtain but if you have a great standing with the pirates and if you're just cruising around the galaxy looking for black markets you will eventually find them they are not that rare compared to other uh, pre-star league mod models and i really divided these four mechs into one support mech with an ecm one support mech with a narc which is a missile strengthening beacon and two dps griffins let's go shortly over the builds and then i'll spend some time showing you footage as with the other lances that i've introduced i am of the firm belief that the ecm is the strongest equipment in the entire game it allows you to completely change the engagement with other lances and therefore it should be at least on one of your mechs. In this case, I used one of the Griffins to carry it because there is no disadvantage in doing so. The Griffin still had a bit of a loadout, which I filled mostly with ERM++ uh, lasers and ERS++ lasers, of course, the ones that have plus damage. We're taking the absolute standard of uh, Gyro++ with 35 uh, stability damage reduction, as well as a com system++ for resolve gain. You will find these pretty much standard uh, standard build around all of the mechs and the comm system in itself is the reason why some of the other models such as the wolverine which do have a hard point slot embedded into their head are not as viable because i will not sacrifice the option of having a comm system plus 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 for the benefit or quote unquote small benefit of having an extra weapon so this griffin here as a support griffin also comes in with a couple of arm mods uh, since it is not a very hot mech if you look at it it runs a heat differential of minus 28 but 
most of that is through the ERS uh, lasers as well. So you can deduct 20 easily from it. And then you will see that it is actually quite balanced. So can go on and on and on. We do have two SRM6++ in there. These are coming with plus four damage and stability damage. An SRM2++, which mainly is me maximizing armor and putting in as much SRMs as possible. And then, like I said, the lasers on top of it. Everything else is rounded up with a nice little heat bank plus plus, which is the best bank for your buck, which is also why you see that the heat management is really, really stable. You could replace that with a double heat sink, but given that the mag itself is already sinking 60 heat due to being star leak, you really didn't need anything else. In terms of firepower, just to kind of net that, we're looking at almost 350 firepower uh, with the narcs from the other support mech that we're going to see soon. Even this support mech is easily netting 400 points of damage. Keep that into uh, mind. If you're looking at uh, structure on each of the locations, a typical medium mech does have around 150-ish armor and some structures so we're looking at at best 230 to 250 armor as you can see here fully maxed out 270 and we're easily wrecking a medium mech but the question will be can we do that with assault mechs as well and you will see the answer is yes we got a griffin uh, that is supporting firepower is a little bit higher here we're nearing the 400 mark Basically, it has a very similar setup and uh, trades the SRM2++ for a NARC beacon. And it also loads a few more SRM missiles in there, as well as, yeah, overall just more missile, um, missile carriers. That will lead to a bit higher heat, but we're still doing very, very well. If you take away the small um, lasers from this, it is a heat differential of 10, so this guy can still work. And you can see, since each of them has four missile hardpoints, I really decided to go with that NARC beacon thrower here, as typically you will need two of these bad boys in order to get kind of an entrenched assault mech down. And then finally, we're getting to the actual DPS, and here we're easily capping the 450 mark. So nearly 460 points of damage, multiply that by 1.2 due to the narcs that you can see. Then you have an easy 550 points of damage, which is quite nice considering that we're looking at medium max. The way that that is built is gyro system, uh, comm system, a standard arm mods to fill it up, really using the same ERM lasers and ERS lasers. And instead of having a narc beacon, we're going all the way with four SRM6++ pluses and have uh, the plus damage and stability damage. Nice side effect of this lance, uh, we uh, would be seeing quite a bit of stability damage. So if you can't get an enemy down fast enough, you will be able to still knock it down and then focus fire. So that's really it. Straightforward, a griffin with an ECM, a griffin with a NARC, and two massive DPS griffins that are going in. Now the question that you all have been waiting for is, how does that hold up in a five scroll mission? Great that you asked. I'll show you how it is. And we're not taking anything for granted here. In this case, I'm literally taking some of the hardest mission target acquisition being one where there will be multiple waves of enemies, five scroll mission in the Badlands. So a biome that only allows 80% of the heat sinks to work. And we're going to go in with a very similar force as beforehand. We're having the Griffin ECM here, the Griffin NARC, the two DPS here. Got our sensor lock in case we need it. Got a multi-shot and two ace pilots. That should be plenty. Let's see how well we're doing. The game, of course, tells us that we're heavily, heavily underutilizing our tonnage capacity, but that should not be a problem. Okay, so we arrived in the mission. 
As I mentioned, this is one of uh, the most difficult emission types. We got a, or probably the diff most difficult one, we got to place three beacons in these target zones. As you can already see, there is going to be two additional lances that are coming in, plus an enemy garrison. There will be produced uh, vehicles in here and a few turrets on top. So easily 20 plus enemies. We've already seen two massive mechs coming up here. The game is now recognizing that it is throwing I hear ya. more and more mechs at us. Let's take a look at how our point. NARC is going to do. You see 40% damage reduction on the Marauder, 20% damage reduction on the Quick Draw. Let's start with the Marauder first and foremost. And just uh -huh. look at kind of the standard uh, damage that, that we're dealing with. So this is just to give him the narcs and now we're using our dps it's clearly not as potent as you would um, see it with the heavier mechs but nonetheless it's nothing to be scoffed at so got revealed over here precision strike and let's try to destroy parts of the marauder 40 percent damage reduction and we still could get almost this entire torso off. Ready for orders. Yes, Commander. Okay. Receiving you. Good. We're moving up with our griffin that is going to protect the rest. And we're moving over here for a nice little flank. On my way. Same deal as before, this time the other side. Critical hit, Commander. This Marauder has 40% damage reduction. We gotta keep that in mind. This time we're taking advantage of our early move. We have been sensor locked with the Griffin. So let's see how well our support mech is going to do. We can already see other mechs are coming in. And I would potentially on it. use all the remaining resolve. All of the remaining resolve to deal with um, vigilance instead of Yeah, instead of target shooting. The mortar here is almost down. You can now see now we're going to take some damage, that is normal, but we do have the advantage. We do have the advantage of an early initiative here. All right, moving over. Like I mentioned, Griffin takes vigilance and we're going to regain some of the vigilance when we're killing this guy. So might as well instead go for the quick draw. This time a full unload, including our small lasers and you can see that quick draw has almost lost its entire armor one of the downsides that you see with the missiles unfortunately is that you still end up with um, quite a bit of spread of the damage and that yeah is within the nature of the missiles good another dps griffin over here Starting to hit the quick draw. By the way, the spray shots have killed I I hit something good. have killed uh, the guy on the ground. And yeah, we do have a stable position overall, but we got to be careful because more and more mechs are now going to come in. Moving up and using again vigilance for the rest. I think we can keep the mech a bit down and yeah two heavy mechs very heavy mechs have already been taken down now we're going to take some revenge fire but given that everybody is at 40 percent damage reduction that should not be a large issue this setup here is less so a sniping setup than the other lances that you have seen so you're not automatically taking the enemies down but thanks to the immense firepower that the setup has we can still take them down quite well so let me fast forward 
Good, the next round continues. We've taken a absolute minor bit of damage. Now it's our turn to retaliate. Hunchback has moved up, Quick Draw has moved up, and we're seeing three echoes over there. I'd uh, simply camp in here. I hear ya. Let's move up and see if we can eliminate the Quick Draw before anything happens. We're taking Vigilance to really reduce the amount of damage that we're taking. And since this here is the multi-shot mech, might as well... Might as well focus on that Hunchback and just get the Quick Draw slowly, slowly prepared. One last, uh, one less evasion blip over here. Hunchback, and keep in mind this was just a support mech. Hunchback already lost a third of its armor. Standing by. Now moving up, same deal here. We're continuing our focus fire. Quick throw is really a bad target for now. And that Hunchback lost half of its arm, plus is almost knocked down. You can see stability damage coming in nice here. Nice try. Alright, again, moving up into the woods. And before we're overheating... Let's make sure that we're focusing on the missiles. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. Good. That hunchback is de facto down. Pilot injured. Explosion completely on the ground. Gotta check how, how many of the weapon systems have even survived. So maybe we're not going to continue focusing it. Instead, go for the quick draw next. Good, so we're looking at one laser, one medium, and one small laser. The advantage of Ace Pilot comes into play as we can take the shots first, in this case all of them, Roger. and then move afterwards. Nicely removed half of the armor of the quick draw already, and then On it. moving back. We're going to take some damage now. I'll fast forward that again. Really going to be moderate. This is the heaviest mech that we're fighting against and you can see barely a blip gone. Okay, next round. This time we are multi-shotting. We already know that the Hunchback here needs just a tiny bit more one damage in order to go down. And then we, of course, do have his friend over there, which wants to get all of the rest we're definitely narc beaconing them so let's do that Got it. fantastic and the guy is already down to 11 hit points on the torso we're being bombarded with breaching shots, which is a bit lamentable, but not the end of the world so far. It actually works out quite well. We got the option over here to continue hitting that quick draw. This time with a more targeted attack in this shot. Completely kill it. Good. First lance is destroyed. We got another lance over here. And one lance over here, which once they engage, we can actually start hitting them. Thank you. The Griffin makes it easy for us to do so. Receiving you. All right, moving up. Precision strike. Target confirmed. 
And you can see that we've almost blown through its armor. So the reason why we're, by the way, fighting quite a few medium-sized mechs here is because there will be 20 enemies on that entire mission. So the game is taking that into consideration as well, just in case you wonder how that and a five-star mission or five-school mission is going together. Good, the next round started. Our main target is potentially going to be this guy here. I assume it's an awesome because I've just seen a couple of PPCs. I've taken the first real hit on the right leg of this griffin, which also means that I would like to start playing a bit more defensive with power line here. Confirmed. We're taking vigilance for 60% damage reduction. And this here is 16 hit points on the torso. There we go. Could we imagine, uh, imagine how that would uh, continue to stay? We're essentially leaving all of those guys out for now. And the Griffin, as well as the Awesome, will be the next target. Okay, we continue to be yep, sensor locked here. One of our DPS Griffins, actually the one that is taking quite a bit of damage. I'll be careful with the precision strikes mainly because I uh, want to reserve some vigilance uh, for this mech. The archer here is potentially also a great target for us. You can see the only reason why we're not at 80% hit chance is because we're sl slightly blocked. And Roger. this is a good benchmark for a heavy mech with 40% damage reduction. Not easy to get through it. Then we're using Vigilance and we're basically going all the way back here, which will force the awesome, correct prediction from my side, to, uh, to move up. The Archer could really be our next big target. There is one more Assault Mech, apparently somewhere around here. So first things first. Moving all the way back to here, using our narcs, here we go. and let's prime the archer. Good, we got a victor from the left hand side, that definitely is a very very heavy mech, so an assault mech. But the one thing that I continue to learn over and over is Let's take shots first, and then move a bit back. Good, here we go. Starting to hit him. He goes down with that, also the 40% damage reduction finally goes down. And... We're moving the Gryphon DPS further back. So, power line is the one with the ECM generator. Well, let's move them slightly. Position confirmed. Let's use our vigilance. And let's start hitting that center torso of the archer. And there we go. Done. Mech destroyed. All right, Javelin walked right up to us. Commander. Typical action that they will take when they are becoming more and more desperate, right? So in order to solve that, what you what we will do is... Can we hit this guy from here? No, we can't. In order to solve that, what we will do is we'll actually put ourselves a bit out there. Want to make sure that this is not backfiring. Small lasers are okay. Medium lasers potentially not. Let's see if the javelin goes down with the small lasers and three 
three of uh, these SRMs. Don't want to overheat. Yeah, we're was barely not enough. Unfortunately, all of them, all of the mechs currently are spotted out. So, really, Light damage. the way firm. to deal with this now Take is out. to kill her or him, the javelin pilot that is. Medium lasers. Can't do a target shot, but there are only 14 hit points on the center torso. Good chance for us to get that center torso down. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. Could move all the way to there, but I rather prefer the 40% damage reduction. Griffin moves out to tank. And we're fighting against two lances at the same time here. Mixed lances, but there are Commander? like assault mechs included in, in them. Griffin moves over here. Let's start with the javelin. Let's also use the coolant. And I think we should be fine. 14, yeah, 14 hit points. That should be good. We're saving quite a lot of heat. Got it. Should have not used an arc here. But yeah, another one down. Okay, we're continuing this time we got uh, shot quite a bit and the next target is potentially going to be this victor here simply because it has an ac20 and that is a relatively nasty weapon against us so we do have two vigilances left over not sure if we want to immediately use it look at the damage that we're dealing even against the heaviest of max Good. The Narc thrower has been sensor locked. Might as well move over here. Now is the time for, for the first Vigilance. That means this mech will be the one that is taking all of the heat and all of the damage. At the same time, we can start hitting that Victor. They're massively under fire with those medium max. <laughs> and someone just stepped into Oh, the Griffin the Shadow Hall. Okay. Okay. Orders. Standing by. Good, let me just get that straight. Uh, we still want to kill the victor, right? Right, okay. I'm not sure if he still has the AC-20 with half of it missing. But we gotta assume that he does. There is a chance here in using our melee capabilities. I mentioned beforehand that we have backed into that quite a bit. So melee damage wouldn't be too bad. 90 points on uh, Mandrake here. What's the melee damage on this one? Also 90 points. Okay. Well, what we could do is we could start hitting it i'm concerned about this griffin here to be entirely honest 
I'll potentially go for a 60% um, 60 damage reduction play. We can attack the back. And I think that's what we're going to do. Confirming vigilance and oh, let's just go for the back. Position confirmed. Solid connection on that one. Shadowhawk lost it all. Might as well move back so that we cannot take the AC-20 again. And this might even kill the Shadowhawk. It at least completely knocks it down. Fair enough. Okay, let's continue to keep our good position here. That Shadowhawk definitely needs to die. Confirm. It's down to 17 hit points. All right, fair enough. Good to go. Good to go. This Griffin does have firepower left over again, and we're a little bit overheated with this Griffin here. So, and plus we do have multi shot. Might as well do this here. And we're looking at what? 17 hit points? Okay, cool. This could be a heat reduction play for us. Fantastic. That's a kill. Only one griffin is being shown at this time. We do have an awesome over here. We do have a catapult over there. Moving to position. Moving over. Vigilance. And we can fully unload on this awesome. Could be our next target. And we got a left leg. That is not looking very good. We'll present the right one over here. Good. The awesome starts being really, really unstable, and we're tanking the rest. All right, an entire new lance has just landed here. Of course, all heavy mechs, so it's gonna become interesting. In the meantime, we softened up uh, the victor over here. There is still a catapult, so things are not slowing down. The big Commander? trouble or problem that we're Ready running forward. into is twofold. Number one, we're running lower and lower on actual SRMs that we can use. Number two, the damage intensifies quite a bit. So we've got to be careful with what we're doing. Good to go. Let's stick with it for now, and we're going to see what the enemy is going to do to our max. Yeah, most of the time they are just trying to spot us out. This also cannot act this turn. It's a perfect opportunity to retaliate. But we have plenty of other mechs to deal with as well.
Good. Let's start over here. On my way. Got to be mindful with how many missiles we're using. Engaging with target. That victory is gone. Gives us some more resolve. Next target potentially the catapult. Commander. Affirmative. Griffin moves back. Precision strike. Just to get this one started. Severely injured. Hit, Commander. If we play our cards right, we can kill it next turn. Yes, Commander. On my way. And we gotta be careful not to use too many SRMs at this point. Twenty-eight points of damage. There we go. That means we've cleaned up the entire second lance here. The third lance almost gone as well. Just the awesome and that Griffin are remaining. And now there is the fourth lance. Like I said, this is an incredibly difficult type of uh, type of mission. Let's go. Let's go. Potentially the most intense mission that exists. Okay, let's see how well we're doing going on. And one thing that we could try to do instead of uh, playing into their strength is making sure that we are okay. We got to use a, the time for a break. Which means we're just running over for now. And let them move into us. They've got a lock on me. Fair enough. I'm here. There is a sensor lock. Standing by. Right over here. Griffin gets vigilance and let it move over here. Double time. Let's go. Orders. That's a definite advantage of having these medium X, they are much faster than the larger ones so sometimes repositioning with the lance can be just the right decision Affirmative. good i'll fast forward to the next round good a bit further we just moved nothing really happened and they are now starting to slowly but surely come after us which of course is something that we can use to our advantage and see how they are stay, uh, standing here. And we're using our moderately to long ranged weapons in order to engage on them. Yes, I fear that a head to head confrontation might be just a tiny bit too much for us at the moment. However, starting to deal and dish out some damage to these guys. It's going to be very helpful. The extended range medium lasers are worth their weight in gold. That was sloppy. I shouldn't have done that. Copy that. I wanted to be extra smart. And basically destroy these guys without retaliation. And unfortunately that really did not uh, work out so well. Okay, so that was more a playing mistake. We lost nothing of importance. Just the arm, but we got to be careful 
uh, to not lose more. So that was fine so far. Let's fast forward and let them come a little bit closer. The awesome here has already taken some damage. All right, we dragged them out just a tiny bit more. As you can see, they are still trying to engage on us. We have a single griffin that is sensor lock by that other griffin, and now we're going to let them come, and I'll take a double turn. Good time to start the double turn, as mentioned. Moving up with this griffin here. Vigilance for next round and as a safety measure just in case something is going wrong and We are trying to get this other griffin down Four hit points The awesome continues to pepper us with shots, but we can retaliate in a second That is where multi-shot comes in quite handy. One target, two targets. Good, we're just going to hit the awesome once and we're hopefully going to kill the griffin over here. There we go. The awesome being the last uh, survivor of that initial team lance that engaged us moving over here and i'm still mindful with how many srms i'm using so let's leave it with three for now got a ppc down i was hoping for a bit more but that's okay by good the beauty of a double turn is ready for orders even I'm if you. even if you just took a turn you can take another one so in this case the dps here full focus we got 34 hit points two lasers should be absolutely enough to do that and there we go so another shot, and thanks to Ace Pilot, Enemy mech destroyed. there's absolutely no reason for not moving to here further away. Good, so we're kiting them into this corridor and trying to kill them. Good, and what we now did is we played the little reserve game. They don't have another opportunity to signal lockers, sensor lockers, which means we just waited for them to move up. Fortunately, it seems that I have not gotten the ability to attack it. The idea is really we're reserving, as you can see here, waiting for them to take their actions. And thanks to the ECM, we have a really, really solid cover. That'll, that'll be typically their reaction just sprinting in. Standing which you can counter if you have positioned yourself well with simply moving a tiny bit I further copy. back everybody else still gets still gets the advantage of uh, the uh, of being protected the ecm carrier itself does not get visible certainly not from a sensor lock so the warhammer here might be our first target Let's just start with a sensor lock. They also have an ECM, as you can see, which is the reason why they are difficult to pinpoint. Good. We can move all the way to here. And I think that that will not create a large retaliation. Typically, you can wait all the way until the last action. The more um, the more 
makes you do well from the field compared to them the more advantageous because sometimes uh, at some point they are going to run out of actions so let's directly start with hammering this guy down Okay, fair enough. They had enough of the charade and now want an open fight. Which is sort of understandable. Coordinates received. Moving back. I choose vigilance over precise shot. But I still think that there is a good chance that we can kill this guy completely. Critical hit. All right, they are not finishing. That's okay. Location confirmed. Good. Now we're looking at twenty-eight hit points of hit point damage. And there we go. First one down. This is potentially the last lance because then we had four lances and that's kind of the upper end of it. Enemy kill team once it's defeated. Maybe there is another lance coming in. So four to five lances, but we're still standing strong as you can see. Okay, within the mech advantage, we of course could force them to move in a way so that we at least get two mechs to act. And since we got better initiatives as well, might as well uh, use that to our advantage. Fantastic. Commander? So that's a solid hit and right, Commander. small lasers here will also solidly hit. Thunderbolt is almost opened, despite 40% damage reduction. And yeah, same game uh, goes on again and again. Roger. This time, the griffin here is caught a bit out of uh, position, so we will need to move it first. Potentially back here. We could even go as far as to give it vigilance and even use a bit of alpha striking. So what I mean with that is vigilance, then attack it. And then we're moving into cover. All right, that guy is severely injured and we're moving back, making it unlikely that we're actually getting hit. Enemy decides once again to simply move in and uh, try to force the issue. That's not enough firepower, but potentially this guy here will have enough firepower. The issue that I'm seeing is too many evasion blips. So. Moving back, we're potentially this time taking some, some shots. If we hit it well, we might be able to kill it before anything happens. Like I said, likely some hits. Orders. Orders. We can nicely tank with that griffin. And 
and we're down to 4 HP on, on the torso. Thunderbolt almost gone, so we're going to take some sort of heat. Nope, we're not. Interesting. On my way. Moving to here, and this should be a solid kill. Fantastic. Good, two more to go. Alright, not very surprisingly, uh, the next mech just charged in. But we do have an option to deal with it. This Warhammer here has completely charged in. And I don't appreciate that. So what we can do is attack its rear. And with our, the amount of damage that we're dealing, that's not going to be a problem. So we're left with one enemy. Moving up, which is a cataphrag. Again, no surprise there. I, I guess everybody has guessed that by now. Got it. And now our, our advanced initiative really is going to favor our position, right? We can move all the way to here. On my way. And start attacking the back. Roger, Commander. And once we get behind the enemy down. mechs, uh, that is actually GG. And I think that is the last uh, one of the fourth uh, lance. If you look at the entirety of the fight, we got a lance over here. We had an initial lance over here, we had a lance over here, we had another lance dropped into here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we had like four-ish assault mechs, around six-ish heavy mechs, and some medium mechs plus one light mech. So quite a bit of work that this group here has done, and with the exception of one empty arm, we have really not lost much so if this is not a testament of a strong or the strongest medium lance i don't know what is i hope that convinced you i'll show the end game screen when we're done with the mission good there you go that's the end uh, screen just take a look at that five kills six kills three kills two kills that's a four and one ratio and yes we've taken also some shots as well as lost an arm here on the uh, on the griffin but here's the thing you are not fighting a four on one lance fight with almost exclusive heavy and assault mechs and just get out of that unscathed at no point were we in danger of completely losing this so we also retained our ammunition towards uh, the very end which is a testament for kind of a well-built lance and all of that happened in a a desertish environment where you gotta really work well on your heat management so if you enjoyed what you've seen if you like the lance uh, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and check for more guides of mac warrior thanks guys stay frosty bye bye